This week I sit down with Kevin Gaines and what a story he has. You're not going to want to miss this as we dive deep into the life that is Kevin Gaines. Kevin, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Man, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate all that. What part of you I've gotten to know already through through being here at Safe House and just being able to take the time to sit down, man. Still to hear your story and uh, let let other people see, man. This uh, the beauty that is life, right? That we all live in our own different ways. Yes. Yeah. So you've been around Safe House now for about how long? Would you um, say? Well, going on uh, two months. Two months. Two months. Okay. Right. Two months. Yes. Yeah. And pretty quickly, you, you came inside and started helping us out. Yes. Um, tell me, how did, how did that even happen? Like, Well, uh, one of my uh, friends uh, I used to get high with, um, okay. we was doing cocaine, you know, smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, um, pretty much you name it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. 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 Um, he actually had introduced me to Safe House because he was getting some assistance. He was trying to get his birth certificate, social security card, uh, food stamps on, and he was looking for housing. Okay. And, um, currently, we both was homeless together. We used to sleep outside uh, North Avenue, um, the train station. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a church right over there, and we used to actually used to sleep outside of the church. Okay. And um, one day, he came over here, and, and I, that's my first time ever hearing about Safe House because I'm from Upper Florida, okay. so only been in Atlanta six months. So when I came here, he told me all the help that you know Safe House provides, and it was an opportunity for me. So I went, I signed up. I told, you know what I'm saying, I, I told Safe House what I was here for, mm -hmm. uh, to get housing and everything like that. And then they were telling me that they have drug treatment programs too that can help me. Okay. So I actually got involved in the drug treatment program. And nice. um, they saw me to um, making the way uh, transition house. Okay. So I went there and I got clean. Nice. And, and, and once I came back, Safe House actually offered me a, a job. Okay. okay. You know, so. So how long have you been clean now for? I've been clean for 62 days. All right, that's what's up. Feels good too. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 62 days. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. One day at a time. One day at a time. <laughs> One day. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know about today. I know about today. Today we're not touching it. Yes. That's amazing. So you're so you're currently then living in an inpatient program kind of a thing, like a transitional housing kind of a program? Yes. Um, the first 30 days, I was actually in the dorm, and it's a four-man uh, dorm. Okay. And after the first 30 days, they was allowing me to come out and start job searching. Um, but then once I paid my first month rent, um, the deposit and everything, okay. I actually moved out the dorm. So I have, I'm in a two-man apartment now. I have okay. my own key. You got your so, own key? Yes. Nice. It feels good. It feels good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. How long has it been since you've had your own key? Well... Have you ever had your own key? I don't want to assume anything. Once. Okay. I had my own key one time. Uh, that was in 2017. And um, okay. that's right before I went to prison. Okay. Yes. So, so let me, let me, let's stay on a good story arc here, right? So you, you got here about two months ago, right? right? You got 62 days, 63 days, 62 days. 62. Okay. Um, you're in the inpatient program currently, right? Like a, a live-in. And you're coming to Safe House every day. Yeah, it's Monday through Friday, uh, nine to five. Nine to five. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you, it's we've over the years have have had different people come in and help help kind of do what you're doing, right? Internally, help help keep some things clean, keep some things disinfected, uh, give you give you a people to belong around and with, right? Um, I've, I've always said. You know, you lay down with dogs, you get fleas. <laughs> right. Right. It's just right. true. That's a good terminology. Um, I think the reverse of that's true also. Right. You you hang out with people that are passionate, you hang out with people that are driven, you hang out with people that are doing something, you're gonna start getting some of that also, right? Do you do you see some of that happening? Yes, I do. Um personalities um of of safe house and uh each individual has their own personality. Uh, no individual is the same. They may be similar uh, to a certain degree, but uh, overall, I, I have not had a bad vibe. I have not had any so, bad experiences like dealing with safe. I see it more as family oriented. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. like anytime I'm hungry, man, people, hey, you got something to eat? Uh, uh, hey, Mr. Gaines. Uh, uh, yes. Like so, it's 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 love, and it's it's I see it as a family, and, and not just a family, but I see it as a friendship and short term. As well as long term. Okay. 
Okay. okay. So, uh, nice. I feel very comfortable. Nice. That's awesome. So you said you said you were went to prison in 2017. 2017. Was that here in Atlanta or was that down in Florida? Florida. Um, down in Florida. So were you born and raised in Florida or what? Yes, I, I was born and raised in Florida. Um, okay. I went to different spots um, here and there. Well, Florida has always been my stomping ground. Because okay. uh, my dad, my dad was in the military. My stepdad was in the military. Okay. So we were stationed in California, uh, New York, but we always resided in Florida. So. Pretty much born and raised in Florida. Okay. Is there a certain part in Florida or the whole thing? Panama City, Florida. North okay. Florida. <laughs> okay. 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 Party town, spring break. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, where, where all the kids would come and just act a fool for a little bit. I'm trying to tell you. Yes. And you right. got you know, Florida is, is is like the trial states. You know what I'm saying? The three states. Um, okay. Georgia, uh, Alabama, and Florida. So right it's there, people coming. Panhandle from, area. Pan. Right. Yes. So it's people coming from those states, man. It's just a party time. Wow. What's that like growing up then? Is that just an absolute disaster? Uh to some degree it is, um, because I forget I got into a lot of trouble um okay. as juvenile as well as adult, you know, okay. because of the party and because of the drugs, the alcohol, the sex. Uh -huh. It's it's all there. And it's like if you have people coming from different spots, it's like, okay, I'll probably never see this person again. So let's just have a good time and I don't have to worry about saving face because I might not never run a partial again. So we can do whatever at that time, at that moment, for as long as we want to, how much of it we want to consume. And I don't have to worry about, you know, an embarrassment coming back or so, oh yeah, you know such and such, because I'll probably never see you again in my life. So that's that's how like my city is. And yeah. then by being that way, it's a lot of things that I have, you know, so like the drug addictions, uh, the alcohol, the sex, mm -hmm. and, and prison. Because yeah. you know that lifestyle yeah. comes with consequences, a lot of consequences. <laughs> so, at what age? So you're 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 being raised in that environment to some degree, right? Yeah. Um, your parents probably don't want you in it. No. But Definitely you're not. you're a kid. At what age do you get into that space? Like, how does that how does that interact with the locals there, and then all these kids coming into town? Well, I started uh, 14 years old. Okay. Yeah, age 14. Um, and. I started actually, they threw a block party and uh, it was one of my friend's birthday. And right. um, he was turning 16 and it's someone I went to school with. Right. So um, that's my first time ever getting high off weed, you know. So the, a friend's 16 year old birthday party, block party. Block party, yeah. Okay, just like old school barbecue block party kind of thing. Yes. Okay. And then, yeah, we had, you know what I'm saying, the female, the, all of us, you know what I'm saying, was 14. So the oldest person there was like, 17 so he was turning 16 i was 14 at the time okay so it was like pretty much in the same age uh range and that's my first time you know experimenting with marijuana okay and i got so high and so drunk uh, we were drinking gin i was taking shots after shots with no chasing and um wow. i don't remember how i got home and you ever drank prior to that uh no so, so first, first time, time drinking first time smoking yes okay yes i got so twisted and I remember I left. I said, man, listen, I got to go. Um, because the next day I actually had to go to court uh, for on robbery. Okay. And so I, I couldn't stay out all night. And then I'm trying to hide it from my mom and my auntie. Right. So I remember leaving. I'm like, okay, I got to go. But I was so twisted. Like, the last thing I remember me saying is I got to go. And then I woke up the next morning in my bed. Don't even know how I got there. That, yeah. That's how, because that was my first time ever experimenting with drugs and alcohol. So my high was on a whole different level. Okay. And I guess I blacked out, but I wound up in the right spot though, in my room. So you've got, uh, you're supposed to be at court the next morning. Right. <laughs> you're 14. Yeah. You never smoked, you never drank no. at that point, but you had caught an armed robbery case. Yeah. And at 14. At 14. Yeah. Having never been high, having never been drunk. Yeah. Was, uh, How's so, that happen? Well, um, all my family, like, I grew up in a household, like, no one in my family uh, has graduated with a GED except, like, my mom and one of my aunties. Okay. You know, they got their high school diplomas. But the only thing that I grew up around in the environment is, is like, the streets, is uh, gang banging, uh, selling drugs, uh, robbing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Very few people in my family actually had the opportunity. Well, we had the, they had the opportunity to work they chose not to. Okay, they wanted the fast life, fast money, the women, the cars, street life. 
So I already grew up in that environment, like with my uncles and my older cousins, and I have two older brothers, you know, so they was already doing things like that. And, but actually, here's a funny story though, like, I actually went to my auntie, you know, cause she was the manager of McDonald's and I asked her, can I start working? Cause I want to get some money too. I don't want to be the only one that getting paid and all my family members coming around with money and all this stuff. So I'm 14, so it's like, I want to start working. I want to get some type of money. So, so I might want to take one of my, my, my little girlfriend out, okay. you know, 14, you know, so she said I couldn't work until I was like 15. That's in the state of Florida. You okay. know, so now I can get a summer job. So I'm like, I got a whole getaway. So then I went to my uncle and asked my uncle how to teach me, uh, teach me how to sell dope. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He cussed me out. He said, man, don't be calling my phone. So I said, don't make your mama kill me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that didn't work. So now I'm like, okay, I'm too young to work. I got to wait the next year till I turn 15 to start working a summer job. Okay. Okay. My uncle don't want to teach me how to sell drugs. So the only thing now is, okay, I'm going to go rob a store. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I went to rob a store at 14 years old. Like a convenience store? Yeah, store. it was a convenience store. Okay. Yes. And only got like 300 and... $50 for it. It wasn't even a lot, you know, but me being 14, that, that was the most money I ever seen, you know, and, you know, so to me, I felt like I was rich. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're like to explode <laughs> as high as it can be at that point. Yes, it wasn't even $400. Now I think about it, I'm like, dang, I, I so it's, it's our life. robbery. It's all right. You're 14. Where'd you get the gun from? I got to go. You're going to tell me a name, of course, but like, yeah. how, how do you... How do you <laughs> I can guess, right? But how did you get? How did you get a gun? Yeah, actually, my cousin, um, the old cousin. Did you ask for it? That he he not he didn't know that you you borrowed no, it. He didn't know. Um, okay. Because uh, uh, he was actually living with me because I started staying with my uh, auntie. Okay. You know, um, so my older cousin he was like 16, 17 at the time when he was in the street selling drugs. So mm -hmm. you know, people sell drugs. You know, you 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 told you know what I'm saying firearms for protection, so you right. don't get robbed by. You know, someone else or someone might try to run off with the dope or run off with the money. So, like, they always told the guns, but mm -hmm. I snuck into a room and I, I took it. Okay. You know, I didn't want to tell them what I was going to do with it. You know, my uncle just cussed me out. You know what I'm saying? Not like, right. my auntie won't give me a job going too young. So, I didn't want to keep getting denied. Nose, nose, nose. So, I'm just like, man, hey, I need it. All right. Okay. I, mean, I just took it without his penis. Okay. And I got caught two days later for a robbery. Okay. And they caught me at school. Those. They had a surveillance camera, someone ratted you out. Somebody ratted me out. Um, yeah. because the person I was actually supposed to do it with someone else, and um, we were the same age, 14. Okay. And um, we actually went to the same elementary school. He's my best friend, you know, at that time. We went to the same elementary school, then we was going to the same middle school, and we got expelled, you know what I'm saying? Because we had gotten into a fight, it was a rival fight, so they expelled both of us. So now we go to this alternative school, it's called PCMI, which is Panama. Uh, Panama City Marine Institution. Okay. And um, he was supposed to go on a robbery with me, but he didn't show up. So I wound up robbing the store by myself. Right. And it was all over the news. And so I come to school like the next day and I'm like, dang, where he was? So he was like, uh, yeah, man, I wasn't feeling well. You know what I'm saying? He said, did you do it? And I was like, yeah, I did it. I robbed it by myself, but I waited on you to come the whole time. So he was like, man, I seen something like that on the news too, but they didn't have a, a description of the person. But he knew exactly what store I was, I was, we were spending right, with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So nothing happened that day. You know what I'm saying? So the next day I came back, he was sitting there too. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, I got to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling well. So he got up and left. And like five minutes later, it was two uh, detectives came in. And they were like, um, yeah, is, uh, is it a Kevin Gaines in here? So I'm like, man. So I got up. I say, I already know what y'all here for. You know what I'm saying? They say, well, what are we here for, Mr. Gang? I say, y'all here for the money. So I took the money. I didn't even spend the money. You okay. know what I'm saying? I held the money for two days. You know, you so didn't spend a dollar. I didn't spend anything. No, not a dollar, not nothing. Could you felt so, guilty? You just didn't have anything to spend it on yet. You waiting for uh, that girl to take out. It was pretty much all of it. You know, part of me did feel guilty. So it's like, because when I robbed the store, man, the dude had tears in his eyes. Uh -huh. and, and yes, he did. He, he was scared. Was he a store owner or was he just like a, a worker? He was a worker. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I did feel bad about it. You know, okay. the last thing I remember seeing that he had tears in his eyes. Oh, wow. And right before I ran out the door, I paused. 
And I'm like, man, listen, I'm sorry about this, man, but I really need this money. You said that to him. I said that to him. And then I ran out the door. So that was playing a part of my, my, my conscience. So I really didn't want to spend it. You know what I'm saying? Then I was waiting on the little female, you know what I'm saying, to take out. We were supposed to go into the movies and stuff like that. But that never happened. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the second day that I actually got the money on me. And so the detectives, two detectives came in. They said, oh, is it a Kevin Gaines in here? And I'm like, man, I already know what y'all are here for. And they're like, what? I said, man, y'all here for the money. I took the money and I threw it on the table. Bam. They said, yes, you already know. You know what I'm saying? And so Was that in the classroom in front of everybody? That was in front of everybody. In front of the class, everybody in the classroom. Yes. You know, so you just immediately, I mean, for lack of a better term, self-snitched. Yes, that's what I did. And said, here. <laughs> right. All right, see, like, and you thought they would be like, okay, thanks for the money, see you later. <laughs> yeah, but they get handcuffed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So at this time, yeah, it's like, this is my first time getting in trouble. So right, right, right. I'm, You're 14, I'm, what do you know? Yeah, right. I'm bringing to it, I'm laying to it, like, even though I don't see my cousins go in and out prison and jail and my uncles and, you know, but... When it came down to me, it's, it's, it's a different experience. Like when you see something versus actually walking through it, oh, you good. know, because yeah. I can see people do anything, but when it's time for me to do it, I don't know about this. You know what I'm saying? Even though I was prepared for this, you know, I done seen it like pretty much all my life. Uh -huh. But when I was in a situation, it was different. You know, and another reason why, because they was going to search me anyway, you know what I'm saying? Because I already... I already knew he told, like, like uh, yeah. he was supposed to be my best friend, you know what I'm saying? Because I already knew he told. So once they would have handcuffed me, they were going to search me and everything like that. So the right amount of money was already there. Because like I said, I didn't spend anything. And the dude knew how much he had in the cash register. Right. Right. And then I got dude supposed to be my best friend. You know what I'm saying? He already ratted me out and everything. So I'm like, man, you know, so it, it is what it is, Tyler. So they put you in handcuffs, they take you to the station. Yeah. In front of all your friends. Yes. Yeah. And then they had got um, they called my auntie, you know, because I was living with my auntie at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, Well, y'all wasn't supposed to handcuff him like that because he's a juvenile, he's a minor. And she was right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because they was they wasn't supposed to, I mean, they can take a minor to they can handcuff me and stuff, but they brought me in for questioning without, you know, without a guardian, without, without anything. Without anything. Okay, right. well. And that's what my auntie, she was mad about that. You know what I'm saying? So but that that's that situation that that's what happened right there. And um I stayed in uh the juvenile detention uh center for 21 days. And I got out the 21st uh, day and they had sent me a court date. You know, my court date was set off for like two months. You know, I wound up losing. Then I wound up going to the juvie, you know what I'm saying, the juvenile um it was a juvenile program. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like anywhere from 18 months to to I'm 21 years old. You okay. know, so but they didn't charge you as an adult or uh, they didn't charge you that at that point. Not at that point. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They didn't charge me as an adult at that point. Okay. You say you were in for 21 months. You said no. Nah, well, I stayed in for 14 to 21 years old. Oh, um, okay. I was actually catching charges inside. Oh, for you real? Know, yeah, battery on Leo. Uh, I I broke the, uh, the police nose. So they added like 36 months on to that, plus the the, the, the robbery, then uh, contraband, induced contraband, all types of stuff. So you got in, yeah. and, and your first offense, right. was that the first like legal, was that the first first law that you broke? Was, that was that was substantial? Uh, yes. It was, yes. Okay, I'm not like, asking it like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But there's there's the first thing that you of, of any kind of consequence of any kind of substance that you did illegal yes you get popped yeah. your best friend you go in and then you start catching more and more yeah. why is that is it like you just you gave up you didn't want to be or is it just the environment what what causes you to punch you know your yeah also yeah, so um, face part of it was um well the the the, the um. The juvenile uh, center that I was in, it was a lot of like police brutality um, against us, like against juveniles and stuff like that. So, and I was already gang banging, you know what I'm saying? At that time, you know, I was always uh, banging blood, you know okay. what I'm saying? Uh, east side blood. So, um, and so you already have some of your crew inside. Yes. Inside yeah. the same center. Yes. Okay. It was a retaliation against uh, the police, and it was a big riot that, you know what I'm saying, that had popped off. Okay. And a lot of us got charged with it. Uh, some of them didn't, but a lot of us got charged with it because they had cameras. 
you know, inside mm -hmm. the program. But the police used to take uh, individuals, man, because they got hidden spots like the laundry room, you know what I'm saying? The laundry room and the cafeteria where they feed us and okay. certain spots inside the facility, like it's hidden. Like the showers, is, of course, it's not going to be coming in the shower. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's where a lot of people used to, even gang members, like us as gang members, like, well, when I used to gang bang, you know what I'm saying? We used to go, and we used to go into the little duck offs, you know what I'm saying? We'll fight robber gang members right there. So we would be on camera so the staff wouldn't see. And those are the same spots that the police used to take. You know what I'm saying? Some certain individuals and you know beat them. So wow. I mean, it was never no killings or nothing like that. But you know, they used to beat a lot of the youths. Okay. So it was you know we got grown, tired of grown men and officers. Yeah, beating up fourteen year olds. Yes. And you know what I'm saying? We got tired of it. So it was like we came together. We like man, why are we fighting each other? Like okay, because I'm screaming out blood and you screaming out crook, or you screaming out you know. Gangster disciple or, or vice lord or, or Latin king or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was even some white supremacists in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so why are we fighting each other when the police is, is, is that all we're doing is dividing and conquering? You know what I'm saying? We're going against each other and then we got to go against the police. It's too much. You know what I'm saying? So we all sat down and we came together. Listen, everybody that gang bang, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You have to participate in this. If not, then. You pretty much exiled. Wow. You know what I'm saying? The police ain't gonna protect you because they the ones they oppressing us. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't gonna get no protection from the police or your own gang, you a neutron and, and you know what happens to neutrons. You know what I'm saying? Neutron is someone that don't gang bang. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They get everything took from them. They get, you know, they they got it both ways with the police and the gang members. Wow. So we all came together and we sat down, we talked about it, man. We like, man, we gotta stop fighting each other and stand up. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't want they coming at us, and then we coming at us. So in the end, how do we win? We losing everything. And wow. so we picked a certain day when we was all in the cafeteria. You know what I'm saying? We eat, man. We just it was a ride. You know that that's what happened with that. And a lot of us got charged with it. Um, and they had through 36 months on to my sentence. You know what I'm saying? And then after that. I just kept catching like different charges, like in, uh, introduction of country, man. You know, so I was, I wound up doing 20, I wound up getting out when I was 21 years old. But I didn't even get sentenced to that much time. I just kept catching inside what was your charges. Initial uh, my initial sentence was uh, two years, uh, 24 months for the robbery. Because that was my first time ever doing it. So I was you, you 14 year old, right. go into this juvenile center mm -hmm. surrounded by 17 and 16 year olds yeah. and keep your nose clean for two years. That was the expectation. That was the expectation. Knowing that you're already in a crew, knowing you're already in a gang, but still going here, she just, that's absurd. Yeah, I was supposed to get out when I was 16. That's absurd. <laughs> so 16, 17. I don't know, I don't know a single 14 year old that has even half the self discipline. Me either. <laughs> right? Like the, right. The, the idea that that would be expected just shows you the. And I don't even know what the right word would be. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure there are people that will fill the word in for me, right? Yeah. With with their thoughts and their opinions, yeah. maybe their expertise. But man, that's just jacked up. It is. And, and then, like I said, that was my first time being a part of that uh, yeah. environment, right? Because being incarcerated is totally different from being free. You know, yeah. even even the gang banging is different. Okay. You know, because in a free world, it's like. You can do something and kind of hide out. You know, you might be way on the east side, uh, uh, and then you might do something on the west side, or you might be on the west side and go to the south side. You can you can hide out, but in prison is more of a closed in environment, so you can't really hide out and do it because everybody's watching. You one hundred percent can't go to this spot at this time. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So it's it's more uh it's tight knit. And it's, it's it's more organized. It's more structured. Okay. You know, and it's like. If something goes down, it really goes down. Okay. You know, it's because it really ain't no running like you can do in the streets. Right. Like I said, you can run from city to city and state to state in the streets. In prison, it, you can't really do that. You can go to the officers and tell them you want to check in, you feel for your life, you know, then you got to fill out this state, and they'll put you in confinement, and then they might ship you to another prison. And sometimes they don't, they let you right back on the compound. So you still got to deal with that issue. You know, so it's, 
And then you have people who are uh, told them something when you were in confinement. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's so you you go in at fourteen, get out at twenty one. At some point, then they move you to an adult facility. Right. Before twenty one. Uh, I went to an adult facility when I was eighteen. When you were eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Came out at twenty one. Yeah. Where's this? Uh, where these facilities both in Florida? Yes. Okay. In the Panhandle area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come out at twenty one. What happens? Like, are you, are you ready to come out? Or I mean, you've been in for seven years now. Yes, six, seven years. I was so institutionalized. Like, it was scary for me to actually get out and be part of a normal society because I have I've gotten to the point where I did seven years, so I missed everything. I, I ain't go to no prom. The little girlfriend I was trying to take out with the money that I robbed. She's married with three that, kids. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that never happened. She didn't even write me one letter. I robbed this store for us. <laughs> you can't even write me a letter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was devastated, man. I, I, right. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I was devastated, man. And, and uh, I was still a virgin. Okay. I was still a virgin, man. At so, 21 when you come out of prison. Yes. Okay. I was still a virgin. And, wow. Um, so I got out, man, and I met this female. And, um. She was a gang member. Okay. You know what I'm saying? She she was gang bang. I met this female through my older brother. Okay. And um, he was like, Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this, this is uh I, I could say her middle name, you know, Denise. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people with middle name. My mom with middle name. My mom and my sister both middle name Denise. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So okay, I met Denise, right. you know, and um she was older than me. You know what I'm saying? She was, I was 21. She wasn't that much older than me. I was 21, she was 26. Okay. Um, first relationship ever. So it's like she literally blew my mind. And, and uh, like I said, I was a virgin. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when I first had sex, man, my nose wide open. I was <laughs> gone. And I was like, man, I was gone, man. You know what I'm saying? So it was crazy, man. I find myself proposing to her. Like, I bent down in front of Walmart in front of everybody. Okay. So I was like, hey, everybody, excuse me, can I have your attention? Hey, this beautiful woman right here, I want to ask her to marry me. You know what I'm saying? I just did it out of nowhere. Like, I was really, really going. Oh, wow. I was, she had me going. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That was my first relationship. Ever. You were infatuated. I was. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, so things like it was, it was start, it was getting good for me. Um, then I started filling out job applications and trying to get hired on. And um, that didn't go so well because I didn't have, really have any experience. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I've been, you know, gang banging in prison all this time. And right. of course they they put people to work too, you know what I'm saying? Like we have jobs and stuff, but I was like outside grounds when I was incarcerated. Okay. And outside grounds deal with like the lawn and cutting the grass. But I never really went to work because they already had their crew. Like once they once the police, once the officers they get familiar with certain people, they just want them certain people. So I all I, all I had to do was just sign in every day and don't do that. So here I am, 21 years old, no work experience. All I know is prison. Bang, bang. That's it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So face tats at that point too, or no? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So you got the face, a lot of the face tats, you got your first your first step, basically. Yes. Okay. So you come out 21, no experience. No nothing. How you old are you now? I'm 34. So this is 13 years ago. Yes. <laughs> with 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 face tats. With that face tats. Face tats today isn't what it was 13 years ago. It's not. 13 years ago, I was like, whoa. Yes. That's a scary person. Right. Now you're like, oh, they got face tats. Not, not the best decision, but okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It, it's just like like Pierce's and Mohawk and Spike Harris. Yeah. And, you know, it, a lot of things these days in 2022 is more acceptable. Um oh. back then, then no, 13 years ago. It was yeah, if you had, you if you know had a I'm face tag, you're like, you're a scary person. Yeah, it's like to, a, to, a, to the majority of society. I agree. You know, like a mass murderer. Like, yeah, whether you're so, whether, whether you're a person <laughs> who is scary or not, yes. You 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 would come across as scary, yes, right? Because it was just so un uncommon per se. I agree, yeah. and that's the experience I was started experiencing once I got released. Okay, and it's like wow, I I was like very shunned, like they, I was like you know pushed to the side, swept under the rug. So it, it made me feel some type of way. I know it was my decision, you know what I'm saying. So I was very understandable, but I was like hurt, you know what I'm saying right. because. I had all these ideals. Um, I wrote some things. I wrote a lot of things that were in seven years, like the goals I had, like short term goals, uh, long term goals, and stuff like that. Okay. And when I got out, I was like, man, none of this stuff is going how I thought. Like, you know, because I had this grand vision. 
of me just coming out and running full full speed. I'm like getting the job, saving, yeah. saving 10%, yes. giving 10% to your church, yeah. doing this, yes. doing this. <laughs> none of it went that way. Like none of it went that way. And I I, I spun to a I got very depressed around that time. Right. And so I started, you know, using drugs. This is while you were there, while you were with your girlfriend. Yes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my drug of choice was cocaine. Okay. You know, um, like I said, I, when I, I take you back, when I said I was 14 years old, I smoked weed for the first time and got drunk and stuff like that. Then I got locked up. Like, you know what I'm saying? The next day I had the court thing. So, mm-hmm. but when I got out, man, I, I started doing coke because that was, that was around me. Okay. And um, the female I was with, she was actually doing coke, but she kept it hid from me because I didn't know the signs of any. Okay. I didn't know any symptoms. She was more like a functioning addict. Yes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And she sold dope. You know what I'm saying? So she sold crack. You know okay. what I'm saying? She never smoked the crack, but she sold the crack. She snorted pop. Okay. But I didn't. I knew she sold crack, whatever. But I didn't know she was like so on, on drugs. And so one day I walked in the room and I seen her and she was she was hitting. I'm like, hey, what you doing? Like. She's like, oh yeah, man, you know, don't judge me. Uh, I would have told you, but I ain't, I don't know how you would look at me. And I'm like, I said, what that make you feel like? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was like, man, it makes me feel good. You know, it knows me. And sometimes I'm stressed. So I, you know, I, I, I take a bump or two and, you know, I'll be relaxed. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, let me try. You know what I'm saying? Because I was going through so much stuff around that time. Like, like I said, none of my plans worked out, man. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a job, you know, uh, I found out she was cheating on me. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't the best lover in the big. I ain't had no experience. <laughs> <laughs> so she had to go to an outside source. <laughs> so I was devastated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah so I'm, oh, I'm, I'm finding all of this stuff out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all these new aspects of life yes. that you haven't had to experience. Yes. Right. You know, and whether, yeah. Okay. So I turned to drugs, man. I started doing coke and, you know, um, it took my mind away from reality. Uh, I, from one thing that I figure out, especially since I've been sober for like these 62 days, drugs is, it, it alters the mind. You know, anything that's altered is something added to or taken away. It's not in this original form. You know what I'm saying? So when people do drugs, man, it's a false, it's a falsified reality. You know what I'm saying? Like the reality is, is being pushed to the side for something that's false. It's a false reality, man. I was living in because I didn't want to go through that thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel empty. And right. when I got when I got high, it made me feel like I was Superman. Like I'm like, man, I, I feel good about myself. Uh even the sex was better. I was more creative. Okay. You know, so I thought I could have right. been, I could have been even worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I didn't know because the drugs were blocking me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it made me feel it made me more bolder and then I started drinking more. So, you know, when I was when I was when I was high and intoxicated, mm-hmm. it made me more bold. It made me a bolder person. Your inhibitions, your your maybe I shouldn't do that. Right. It was gone. It was gone. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I can walk up there and talk to females and not be shy, you know, because I deal with a lot of insecurities because I was incarcerated for so long. So I didn't know how to adapt to society. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to be around people. Like one time I was walking down the street, I was going to the store to get a beer. You know what I'm saying? And one of my friends rolled past. They were like, hey, Kevin, you ain't in prison no more, man. Like he rolled past, but he stopped at a red light. You know what I'm saying? He like, hey, Kevin, man, you ain't in prison no more, man. You ain't gotta be looking crazy like that. Cause you know, I'm walking, I got a prison. It's a, it's a, it's a certain way that a person in prison walks. Okay. I have this prison walk. I got the tattoos. I'm looking around like, cause I, I, I embedded that. Okay. I, I did so long in doing it. So, I was institutionalized. You just you, you know? just walk in like you're buff the whole time. Yes. And it was no need for that. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it's which doesn't help you find a job. It doesn't. It pushed people away. Right. It pushed people away. Like I I didn't have no type of experiences like dealing with anything. The only thing I knew was negativity. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then like I said, I started getting more high, more drunk, you know what I'm saying? It just spun out of control with it. And um me and her, like me and me and Denise, we wound up separating. Okay. Of course, she cheated on me anyway. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was so like. But you had the Walmart experience together, man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, I proposed in front of everybody, man. Like, and they was clapping, and and she really had me going. Like, she really wanted to do it, and yeah. you know, I'm I'm so blind and naive at this time. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought it was love, but it, it was I was just convenient for her. I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So you're 21, you're with her until oh, you're how old? I was with her until I turned 22. Okay, so yeah. so what well, felt like forever, but it did. <laughs> like a year and a half, maybe. Yes. Right. Okay. It did feel like that. Still in Florida. Yeah. Where, where what happens next? Do you finally end up getting a job? Do you just keep gangbanging? Do you catch okay. another case? I, I didn't get a job. Um, I actually started uh, hustling in the streets. Okay. You know, I was still gang banging. You know what okay. I'm saying? So I just started doing I gave up on the job opportunity. Same area with Panhandle. Uh, yeah, about the Panhandle. Then um, we left uh, Panama City, Florida, and um, went to Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. And Jacksonville, Florida, man, is crazy. So you flip coasts. Yes. Okay. Jacksonville is crazy. That's the biggest city uh, land wise in Florida. Okay. Just geographically, like like mileage, square mileage or whatever. Yes. Okay. And there's a lot of violence down there. So um they yeah. you know it's it's crazy, man. We used to have a safe house in Jacksonville. Uh, okay. It might have been around that same time. I didn't know had a safe house. It was a uh a gentleman and his wife, they went they came to the safe house here in Atlanta and fell in love with what we were doing. They said we want to do that too. Right, and right. So I found it Philip. My dad was like, all right, let's do it. And so they opened up a storefront. Some neighborhood in Jacksonville, I, I used to would have known it. Um, <laughs> um, and they started doing kind of what we do, just out of the storefront and so in a little strip mall in, in the neighborhood in Jacksonville. You said it's a strip mall? Yeah, it's a strip mall in, it's in on, Jacksonville. It might be the landing. It's something called the landing. It's like it's, da it's downtown. Uh, it's, it's like downtown. It, I know it was. I know it was inner city ish. It was urban ish. Okay. You know what I mean? It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like you know gated community suburb kind of a strip mall. It was definitely. Okay. Definitely more of a poverty, um, poverty area. Okay. Yeah, they got a lot of it. In Jacksonville. <laughs> Jacksonville is it's wild. Man. So you move to Jacksonville. You move with family. You move with friends. You just move because uh, you're sick of. I actually moved with um it was a female um okay. the, after me and um Denise had it separated. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I got involved with another female. Okay. And so y'all move out there, you still start hustling, you start selling yourself. Yeah. Not selling yourself. Yeah, you I get it. Comma. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. And um it was even more crazy because it, I like I spun out of control even more because it's a bigger city. So it's faster paced. Is a uh, different mentality. It's, it's a different breed of people. Okay, it's more violent. You know okay. what I'm saying? You um, man, from there, man, I had wound up uh, catching another charge. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this one I had was the feds. Okay, so I I don't know I did the feds. I did like the first time I went to the feds. I did uh, I did three years. Okay, yeah, I did three years in the feds. Okay, you know what, what they get you for? Uh, gun charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you selling arms, or were you just using it, or just carrying it, or? I was toting them uh, for my protection. Um, uh, because like I said, I'm not from Jacksonville, so that's my first time being there. Mm -hmm. And then the lifestyle that I was living and I was involved in, I was used to toting guns anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I had to add, add me a piece on me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, so very different lifestyles. You and I had. had at that age, the, the one point in my life where I was carrying a gun back when I was a knucklehead in my, my <laughs> later teenage years, I told myself it was for protection. Right. It was really just because I wanted to feel cool. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Yours was legitimately for protection. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Mine was a, a status symbol of sorts, See. right? Just so I wanted to feel cool, wanted to be one of those guys. Right. I see, I see. To, to you, it was legitimately a tool of, of protection. Yeah, because of the lifestyle. Of the lifestyle. Yeah, you know, um, and it was it was crazy, man. Like it was, it was real wild. Okay. Um, I wound up getting caught with the gun. You know, I wound up, you know, what I'm saying doing doing three years okay. in the feds. And when I was in the feds, I ran across Big Meech. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Big Meech. Uh, anybody who don't know who Big Meech is, Black Mafia family. There's a documentary on uh is that Amazon Prime? Is that on? What is Prime. that on Netflix? Yeah, it's, I think it's Prime or it's either Prime or Netflix. Okay. It's one of them. Well, yeah, it's a doc documentary written by uh, 50 Cent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? By Big Meach uh BMF. And um I was actually in the in the in the feds with him in the same dorm, you know okay. what I'm saying? And I was actually with other mob figures and everything. So are y'all on the same crew or different crews? Uh different crews. Um Big Meach, you know, he originally came from Detroit and he started like BMF in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Black Mafia family, but he had Crips and Bloods inside of Black Mafia family. Okay. You know, that he actually united a lot of that. Me, I was just banging Bloods. 
you know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I wasn't part of the black mafia, but we was in the same dorm together, not the same cell, but the same dorm. Right. Like I ate, I ate with him every day. Um, you know what I'm saying? Went to the yard and stuff like that, but I wasn't affiliated with the DMF because I, I was still sneaking blood. <laughs> you know Did you saying? know who he was at that point? Like, was he, was he already the big name that he is now? Yes. Everyone in your world knew. Yes. Exactly who he was. Yes, everyone did. And uh, did that do anything to you? Did that like that wake you up to? Oh crap! This is where I'm headed. Or was it, it more of a? Oh wow! If he can do it, I can do it. It was kind of both. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was inspired. I'm like, man, this big Meech. Like this, this is this is who Rick Ross talks about. I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, this is real Big Meech. And it's like, I was inspired. I'm like, man, like a lot of people don't get the opportunity to run across like people in different like categories. Mm -hmm. This man, you know what I'm saying? Like they, 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 they seized like a uh, hundred million dollars from this dude, man. You know what I'm saying? They had like 200 million or something in assets. And I'm like, I'm really around this man. Like this man had connection all in Florida, Miami, Florida, everything. And, and so I looked at him, I was like starstruck. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like. Okay. Then I'm like, man, like I want to be like him, but I don't want the time that come with it. You know what I'm saying? Because they gave Big Meach 30 years. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, this is it's a pleasure for me to meet someone of, of this category because he has he's a business-minded individual. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you can take the street mentality and incorporate it to corporate. You know what I'm saying? Because even corporate is still it's still a hustle to some degree because it's business. Yes. But if you can leave the, the 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 street sense out of it and just you know it's it's and pursue it. You know what I'm saying? Even harder than the person pursue selling dope. You know what I'm saying? It's genius. It's sales. It's marketing. That's what it yeah. is. Sustainability yeah. of income stream. Yes, it's, it's the same it's, thing. It's discipline because you know what I'm saying. Certain people sell dope. You got you got clocks. Okay, you clock in right here. Then you know what I'm saying. This is your time off, and we're gonna switch it around. You got this watch over here. So it, it all depends on what your crew, how your crew moves. It's just it shifts. Yeah. It is this. It's organized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. That's why they call it organized crime. Well, because um, it really is organized, but. It's just street, you know what I'm saying? So when I seen Big Beach, like, I was intrigued, okay. you know what I'm saying? And, and that really motivated me to, to, you know, be greater. But instead of being greater in the street sense, I wanted to take it corporate, you know what I'm saying? Use that same hustle mentality, mm -hmm. just turn from a negative to something positive. Is that is that something that happened in your own head or is that something that you heard him, like, espousing to others? While it, while eating meals around each other, you know what I mean. Like, did you did you did you take that and then turn it? Right, I, I took it and turned it. Um, because okay. you know, Michi still had his own little, you know, way of doing things. Okay. So uh, they gave him thirty years. So it's like a part of him, you know. Okay, I put it like this: like a part of him, like you know, what I'm saying, wanted to do that too, but he never really fully like discussed it. But I could see through his actions, you know, he was changing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And anybody sitting with 30 years, man, you better do something. Like, because you got you got pills, you trying to get back in court. So you got to put on your best behavior. And not saying that it wasn't genuine, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I just look outside, I think out the box. So how, how was it that you, right? So you're, you sit for six, seven years initially, right? Your formative years, 14 to 21. You're out for a few years. You catch a federal case right. going for three. You meet him, yeah. you see him, you're around him. What part of you says, let me take the good out of this toxic soil yes. and use the good? Like how where do you, how do you get there? Because I would think a lot of people would just be like, Still I, I'm toxic, I'm toxic, I'm toxic. How can I be as toxic as possible? Right. But you have something inside of you that says, no, let me let me turn and make this work. Because like sitting there like day 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 and day night uh day in and day out like with him I'm just like looking at like dang this man got thirty years mm -hmm. I don't want to be like that I don't want to be in that category of being in prison for the rest of my life or uh, I don't know I already did a portion of it you know what I'm saying it's time for me to do something different excuse me so that's that's where I was at with that 
And me being around people, there's some people in the feds that got life sentences, two life sentences. They never going home. It don't matter how much money they have. It don't matter how many lawyers they have. You got to understand, the government prints money. So they don't need your money. You know what I'm saying? They, okay, you can get it. You're not going to outspend right. for lawyers more than the government's going to spend. And that's, 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 that's the thing about it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be like that. And I'm not going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? So I really had to sit down and make a, a cautious decision. You know, do I want to continue doing this and wind up like them? You know, over the street thing? It's not worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So okay. then I started, you know, doing things and I actually got outside. I, I left the blood gang alone. You know what I'm saying? And I did that for spiritual purposes. You know, so I had talked to, uh, we blood say big homie. You know what I'm saying? Like big homie is pretty much like a sponsor. Uh, you know, my superior. Okay. That's the person that I go to. Uh, he molds and shapes a, a person. A mentor. He, you're a big mean, yeah. Here. Okay. He, te- he taught me the game life, uh, the lingo, the codes, the symbols, the signs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The lifestyle. I love it. So I came to him and I had talked to him and I was telling him how I really felt. I say, I say, bro, man, like, you know, I got love for, for the nation. You know what I'm saying? I don't put in so much work for it. It's all over my face. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't earn it. You got to earn this type of stuff, the symbols and signs. And, you know what I'm saying? So I said, I put in so much work for it, man. And it's caused me nothing but prison. You know, me pushing people away. You know what I'm saying? Family members, uh, all type of things, man. So it's like, I want to do something different. You know, I don't want to be in prison for the rest of my life. I don't want to be incarcerated. I don't get, I don't get, I don't get so much time, man. Like I can never get that time back. You know what I'm saying? And I said this ain't a cop out. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously my record shows that I put a lot of energy behind street life. Now I want to do something different, bro. I want to turn something negative into something positive. I can take this negativity and spin it. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can be a motivational speaker. I could tell my story. My story is just my testimony of well, you know, I say the God of my understanding, because everyone got, you know, different belief about their spirituality. But you know, the God of my understanding, the universe, you know what I'm saying, allowed me to actually have the opportunity. And I call it the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? I had a street world, which wasn't so glamorous. But you know, now I've changed and I'm gonna continue to change and continue to elevate, you know what I'm saying, to 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 grab some grab some different you know what i'm saying so i was telling him all that man and he was like well you know you know because one acronym behind blood is brothers leading out of darkness okay e-l-o-o-d brothers leading out of darkness okay. blood you know what i'm saying that's one of one of the acronyms so i use that i hit him with law and right, policy because right, right. i know how to do that i know how to i know how to manipulate words with them for righteous cause so I said, yeah, man, we say we bloods, man, but that's brothers leading out of darkness. You know what I'm saying? Our brotherly love on our domain. Okay. So if you really love me as a brother and you want to lead me out of darkness, then release me from the nation so I can do something better. And he was like, man, he said, ain't nobody never stuck to me like that, man. He said, man, you smart, bro. He said, did, did he know what you were doing? Yeah, okay. you know what I'm saying? Okay. He said, so you trying to use the laws and policy right, right. And, and, and flip it. And I, I just smiled, man. And he was like, you know what, man? You good, bro. You good, man. Go ahead, man. And he had the authority to release you. Yeah, he did. Okay. You know, we call it getting our walking papers. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I got my walking papers. You know, I, it actually goes into a book. Because he has a superior, he has the support. Uh, yeah. uh, report to okay. you know what I'm saying. So uh, he called the outside source, and, and the outside okay. source writes something to the book. Yes, you know it's, it's structured. Most people don't realize there's anywhere near that level of structure to it. Man, listen, on the outside looking in, you just you just look, you just see a mob of people, and see they just person doing a thing. Yeah, they gun toting and throwing right. up signs, man. But on the inside looking out, it's it's, it's a lot. Of as you said, it's deep organized. It's organized, organized crime. Yeah. You know, like the mafia organized crime, you know, racketeering, extortion, safe house, we're organized <laughs> ministry, organized ministry, organized crime, organized business, yes. organized, you know, and and, and that's yeah. and I told them my fans and my ideas because I want to start something called Thug Ministries. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I remember I turn everything negative into a positive. Mm-hmm. So if I scream out Thug Ministries, like 
if you break the word those that are T-H-U-G-S, okay, true heroes on the God's salvation. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you break the word gangster down, G-A-N-G-S-T-A, God's almighty nation growing stronger through all things. That's awesome. Break the word hood down, H H uh double O D, history overcoming our depression. You know what I'm saying? Because you can be depressed in your mind. You know what I'm saying? So if you are depressed in your mind, you know, your actions is going to follow the way that you think. And I call it your ABA, which is action, behavior, attitude. And that's what equals your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want to turn the negative into a positive. And yeah. you start by speaking because you speak things into existence. And once that, once you speak something, that's what that thought. And then that's where your actions follow. So if I can turn these negative words around, you know what I'm saying, and start speaking a positive on it, then I'm going to think a positive, I'm going to act positive. Because it's all about word. There's a, uh, there's a lot of misunderstandings with word, but there's so much that we haven't even touched in regards to the power of words in our own actions, in our own lives, in our own hearts, yeah. and in our own spirits, right? I agree. I remember when I, when I first when I first came to Christ, I was trying to trying to get my head right, right? Quit trying to think about all these things that used to be part of who I was. Right. The power of speaking scriptures out loud did so much for me, right? And, there, and there's a, I believe there's a spiritual truth to scripture accomplishing the purpose for which scripture is set, right? Um, and spirit reproducing spirit, flesh reproducing flesh. I believe there's a whole, whole heart of spiritual truth in that. And just simply though, from the earthly physiological perspective, right. you can't think vile thoughts when you're speaking something different. I agree. If I'm speaking, you know, John 3, 16 out loud, while I'm speaking a sentence, I cannot think about something totally different. I agree. Right? So I got this vile thing in my head. Be renewed by the truth. Your word is true, the scripture tells us. Right. Right? And, and even if it isn't scripture, let's just say I know a poem about turtles <laughs> right right and i recite this poem about turtles even doing that out loud still takes captive the thoughts that were vile right. and puts them away so i I, lo I love that you that you that you enjoy and appreciate the wordplay i, do. I love it man. yeah that's awesome that's that that's one of my passions right that's awesome and, you know because it all does start with words you know what i'm saying like if i call myself you know a gang banger all my life. Oh yeah, I bang, I bang, I bang. You know what I'm saying? And okay, I might do bang. You know what I'm saying? Not anymore, but well, let's turn that negative to a positive. Okay, now I want to bang for God. I want to go just like I was out there on the street corners. You know, banging blood. I'd be right there on the street corners with a ministry, a street ministry, bringing them other people from being bloods and crips. And no disrespect to any bloods or crips or vice lords, and no disrespect at all. You know what I'm saying? But it is a better way of living, but it's all about choices, you know. So when did you? When did you? When did your mind change? When did you get away from wanting that identity as, you know, this? This is what you're doing. You are a blood. This is who you are. This is what. This is who your people are. Right. This is your crew. When did you go from that to needing to talk to your big homie and say, "Yo, I, I got to get out," because I I started seeing a lot of things that was a contradiction. And uh, bloods kill bloods more than crypts kill bloods. You know, okay. it's a lot of set tripping because if you if you know the history of blood, you know, um, the first blood set was Pyru that came around in 1972, 1973 area. So we get the phrase Pyru Nation. Yeah, okay. you know, it's Pyru blood. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying, California. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's the first. You know what I'm saying? And that's West Side, West Coast. But then you got East Coast Bloods, you know what I'm saying? Someone from California came, you know what I'm saying, to New York and started the East Coast Bloods. Okay. And the East Coast Bloods is really the cleanup set. They're like the cleanup crews. Like they're the ones that are violent, vicious, and they're the ones they they're gonna put in some work if work needs to be done. Like no questions asked. They they are the they very, you know, they're aggressive, you know what I'm saying? So frontline infantry kind of vibe. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you have a lot of the West Side and the East Side, you know, West Coast, East Coast Bloods. It has different concepts of how you should move and how you should not move. So sometimes it's a war that starts because of the different concepts. You know what I'm saying? And 
or oh, well, we east side, you know what I'm saying? Well, so we don't have to answer to the west side, or you know, well, west side, we the first, so y'all do got to answer to us, you know what I'm saying? So east side is more renegade, okay? You know, it's, it's more like renegade, what we gonna do, we wanna do, so it's all wars, you know? So I start seeing, I'm like, man, this is so crazy. I'm like, all of us blood. Like, it don't matter if you west side or east side, it's still blood at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's brothers leading out of darkness. Brotherly love on our domain, but we're not living on that. You know what I'm saying? We stabbing each other. You know, it, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's a division. And when you divide, you can be conquered. You know what I'm saying? And we divide and conquering ourselves. Why? It don't make sense. All because of a different ideology. So how, does, how does that process. how does that take you to a, a new thought process then? How do you how do you land on how do you land on on God? How do you land on the message of the cross? How do you land how do you land where you landed? So man, like God was the only person that can get me through like craziness, uh, that, that that madness, man. And I used to go to sleep with a knife on me every night. I used to walk to the shower with a knife on me. You know, everywhere I went, I had to have a knife on me, man. And it's not a peaceful way of living. You know, it's not. It's like I gotta go to sleep and wake up and wonder if somebody gonna be standing over me. I don't want to live like that no more, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about choices, you know. And I made a choice to to want to live a better life because I got tired of doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Then you got people that say, "Oh well, you know, we're doing for a righteous cause," and you know that might be true, but you can go by doing certain things a whole different way. To where it's not, you know, you're not jeopardizing your freedom, you're not jeopardizing your life, you're not jeopardizing people around you. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing. I still want to lead people out of darkness. I'm just doing it in a different way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Same concept, different way of going about it, in a different ways through my actions. And um, that's what that's what led me out of it, man. That's what led me to God because I ain't have nobody else to call on. You know what I'm saying? I used to call my mama. That's my best friend. You know what I'm saying? My mama is my best friend. Like I tell her everything. She knows like pretty much everything about me. Dude, from the, you know from the 10 seconds you were on the phone with your mom before we started, I was like, man, this, this mom's cool. Yeah. She is, man. And it touched her because she started crying. When she started crying, I was And like, then you lost it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, because this, she like, Kevin, you've been through so much and I'm so proud of you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And she thanked you for it giving just, me this opportunity. It came right out, man. Like, you can just, you can, you can, Feel her love just seeping out of the phone, man. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. And you know, she always been in my corner, like you know, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But she gonna tell me about myself too, cause she she's not gonna. Well, that's all. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, she gonna tell me like, Kevin, you know, just cause you my son, don't mean I ain't gonna you know get on you, tell you what what's right. right and what's wrong. But at the end of the day, you are a grown man. So the, the the choice and the decision that you choose to make, you know, it can be beneficial, not only to you, but to people around you, or it can be detrimental. You know what I'm saying? So did you, I'm going to tell you the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you the, the wrong thing not to do, but the choice is up to you because I can't make you do anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? But she's going to tell me about myself, whether I like it or not. <laughs> and I got to respect it. it. Way more moms doing that these days, more dads doing that these days yes. too, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We definitely do. So you, you, get out of, you get out of the nation yeah. while you're still locked up. Yes. <laughs> In, in Jacksonville, right? It's where you're living at that point. You you end up getting out. Well, you're you're a neutron at that point, though. Yeah, and I, that, I, I don't know if we had time to get into how what that looks like, but let's just. So you end up getting out. Yeah. After a three years stint, and you said at one point that was your first time getting the Fed. Yes. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I went again, right? Because yeah, that 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 was that was the first time. Okay. But I was out. I was out on federal uh, probation. I violated my probation. Okay. With a new charge. <laughs> oh no. So you didn't just violate, you got a new one. Yes. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh man. And you know what I'm how saying? Long is, how long did they send that to you this next time? Uh just 18 months. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I had called the charge had actually got dropped. You know what I'm saying? It was a gun charge. You know? okay. So but I didn't they I didn't know they couldn't prove that I had a gun on me or anything. But being by me being around the gun and I'm a convicted felon. I wasn't supposed to be around the gun. You know what I'm saying? So my cousin wound up taking the taking the charge, but they still violated me because I was around it. Around it. You know what I'm saying? So 
you know, federal probation. Yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, yes, yeah, that terminology. Right. Yes, that goes right back to that. You right. know what I'm saying? And even though they ain't finding on me, I'm just by me, you know, the police had stopped us, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause uh my cousin um his tail light was out. So that gave him probable cause. And when they stopped, you know, he's smoking weed, so he smelled the weed, another probable cause. I'm like, man, this is crazy. And here you are in the back seat. Man, I'm like, you know, I'm on federal probation. I'm all right, this ain't look all right. So I, I'm already on the phone texting my mama. Like, because I'm my best friend. Like, oh, man, I'm like, I'm like, oh, man. Because like, tripping. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you when I can. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, man, it's crazy, man. And I showed up in jail. You know what I'm saying? That violated my probation. But you were done banging at that point. I was. You were living a life. You were you were personally living a life that was clean, right. hanging out with people not so much. Right, you know. But I mean? personally, you were. Yeah, I was. You know, what I'm saying? I was done banging and everything. I wasn't. So you go in there, you're again, you're you're neutron again that time. Yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's been over an hour already that we've been talking. Yeah. Um, maybe we need to have like a, a follow up at some point. <laughs> You end up getting out a second time. Yeah, you're what 26 maybe at this point. Uh, this time I was uh, actually 27. I was like 27. Yeah. Okay. So 26, 2027. 20, okay. Right time and, um, and that's mm-hmm. when like um, I had met my baby mom. Okay. Yeah, I got two beautiful girls. I oh, do. You? Yes. Ah, oh, that's what's up. Five and six years old. Ah, oh, that's what's up. I love you, man. Okay. That's so cool. I got I got a long story about that too. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yes. Where they are they down? Like we don't even go in the name of like their city or not. Are they in Florida? Are they in Georgia? Where they are? No, nah, they actually um in Georgia. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They uh Columbus, Georgia. It's remember like an hour and forty minutes away. Yeah, yeah sister in Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, they in Columbus, Georgia, man. Yeah. Um, they beautiful. That's cool. Some of beautiful little girls, man. Yeah. yeah. I missed out a lot of their life. The five and seven or something. Yeah. Uh, 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 five and six. Five and six. Yeah. Wow. I missed out a lot of their life because uh, I went, you know what I'm saying? I went back in 2017. You know what I'm saying? I did another prison deal. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I missed out a lot of their life. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's crazy, man. You know, the girls still love me. I don't know. So. They know who I am, you know, because my baby mama, she actually, she actually showed them pictures of me, and, and I used to call on the phone and talk to them, something in my voice and everything like that. But she never brought me to see me, though. You know, she had a lot of stuff going on. And wow. She moved from Florida to Georgia, you know, got involved in a whole other relationship. Okay. Crushed me. It crushed me. Why you're, why you're locked up? Yeah, because me and her was together when I left, you know what I'm saying? So, so when you got locked up, you were together. You had one baby, she was pregnant with her second, or she'd already had the second. She already had the second, but yeah. um the second one, she was still in diapers. Like, you know, baby, what I'm saying? Baby. yeah, both of them was in diapers, but my my oldest one, um she, around that time, my oldest one, uh, she was walking and starting to formulate, you know, oh, sentences. Those fun stages too, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? My youngest one, she was scooping. We had them so close together that every year for one month they the same age. Um, and then, I think there's a term for that, like Irish twins or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. Every, every year for one month, they're the same age. Then my oldest one take off. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's how close we have them together. Why? My baby was pregnant twice, to, uh, two times, you know what I'm saying? That, that. Yeah. Pretty much pregnant for two years. Almost. Then you get locked up. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Just. I did four years. Okay. Um, the last, that was my last bid, right? Or something now. that was legit. Uh, well, uh, I had did a uh, talk about the charge. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Called me a battery charge. And that, you know, pass, the pass came up, you know what I'm saying? Even though I wasn't banging anymore, you know what I'm saying? And it's still a multiple time going. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And people still, you know, people never forget what you might have changed your life, but that doesn't mean that other people have changed their life. Mm-hmm. And I still have a right to protect me and my family. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a situation that went down. Uh, dude pulled the gun out. You know what I'm saying? And okay, I gotta protect me and my family. Man, I got my baby mama right here, and I got my two daughters. Man, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? My two daughters in diapers. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna let you harm them or me. 
You know what I'm saying? So, so he pulls a gun out on you yeah. while you're with her and your baby suits and you had to do it. You had to do it. Yeah, so I had to scuffle and everything like that. Um, but then by I have a, a past record, you know what I'm saying? It was my word against his type, you know what I'm saying? And I was on my, you know, I don't know, man. It's, it's so the, 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 at 14, you do something stupid. Yes. Yeah, Legitimately true. stupid. Yes. Some would say, well, Kevin didn't have any choice. That's all he'd ever seen in life. And there there, there could be a, a, a case made there, right? You also have a fantastic mom. So yes, you knew better. I did. Okay. So you, but you do something stupid, yeah. right? It's not a mistake. It's a bad choice. That's what Two different things. Yes. A mistake is, oh, I knocked over my coffee. Right. A bad choice is I picked up the coffee and I, <laughs> and I threw it on you, right? right? Two different things. Two, right? two major differences. So <laughs> you made a bad choice at 14. Yeah. Your teenage years, all the way to 21, you're in lockup. Yes. Just surrounded by people that make bad decisions for a living. Yes. Generally <laughs> speaking, that's a big, that's a big paintbrush. I probably shouldn't paintbrush that big, but that, that general idea. Yes. Okay. You, you get out, you go back in, you get out, you, you're doing fairly well. You got this baby mama, you got two babies. Life is decent-ish. It is. Right, like there's at least peace in your heart. You have a, you have a higher purpose to live for. You, you found even, God. You found Christ. Right. I even had a job around that time. Too. I got a job. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then someone steps to you, where you, and a lot of people are going to say, "Well, he shouldn't have been where someone's going to step to him." Yeah. Well, clearly he was still doing something wrong. Why did this guy step to him? Is that the case, or did this dude just catch you out the blue? No, the like I say, like you like. Even though I changed, you know, people, certain other people haven't changed. Um, mm -hmm. It was actually um, one of my rivals from the past. Okay. So, like, even though I changed my life, it doesn't mean he changed and let it go. And he just found you somewhere? Yeah, we was actually leaving out of Walmart. And it happened in the Walmart parking lot. And he like, oh. And he just recognizes hey. you from the past. Yeah, you know. Steps. Yeah, you know, because I, I, was, I, I was banging real hard. You know what I'm saying? He was a rival gang. But you were yeah. out at this point. I was, you know, but in his mind, he did you stay out once you got out of prison? Uh, did I stay out though? Out of, out of banging? Yes. Okay. So it legitimately is just something that cops packs up to you. Yes, because of the choices I made in, in, That's in, rough. in the past. Yeah. You know, when people say karma, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes people get karma in different ways, mm -hmm. but sometimes a karma hit through the same person of what you've done. And sometimes that same person, the exact same person, can come back and be oh, bad. I guess. You know what I'm saying? Then sometimes other people. That's what going, happened. That's what happened. You know what I'm saying? And, and I accepted it like I wasn't fighting for me. I was fighting for my family to protect them. Okay. Because I jumped in. I you know when he pulled it out. The only thing I think about is my girls, and I thought about my kids first. Then I thought about my baby mama second, because I don't want to have my kids. You know what I'm saying? Them, them, this, right, my right, seed. Right. But my baby mama got to be there just in case something happened to me. She still got to be there to, mm -hmm. you know, raise them. You know what I'm saying? So when he pulled, that's the only thing that was in my mind. Okay. So I'm tussling this. We tussling. You know what I'm saying? And gunshots go off. Like there was three gunshots went off because we got to be tussling. You know what I'm saying? So no one gets hit. No one got hit. Okay. No. But like a discharge of a firearm, you cut that part. Yeah. It's his story against yours. That's what it is. You know you're, what I'm you're a lifetime criminal. So they based, on, based on your record. Yes. Not based on who you are as a man or as a person, yes. but just on the record. Yes. And so you lose out. That's what really happened. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, um, wow. I'm going to tell you a funny story. I seen him because he wound up getting locked up too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. crazy. It's the same thing with the corner thing. You know what I'm saying? But we wound up, he, he was like right next door to me. You know what I'm saying? I was in a different uh, dorm. But we all go to the yard together, you know, we go eat, like they let yeah. the dorms out together. Canteen, commissary, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to call it. It's, so we out there, you know what I'm saying? And I see him, like, I see him because I've been, I've been in, I've been in the joint before he came. Okay. So he came, you know, a little later. I imagine the new person stands out. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then, like, even though I wasn't banging blood anymore, like, it's a lot of people that knew me from the past and I put in work in different prisons. You know what I'm saying? And some of them got life sentences. So they were just telling stories. Oh, yeah, man, that's, you know, uh, my, 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 my blood name was K Murphy. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> <Nurse side. laughs> that's my yeah, so okay. they like, man, that's Canada, man. You know, they like, who? K Murder, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they like, hey, what's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? So I had a homeboy that worked in the laundry. Now, when people come, like when, when a person comes through intake in prison, okay. you know what I'm saying? They got the name already because they're coming from the county jail because they have to have their clothes. You know, the size clothes that they, they print your uh, your name on, on the uniform. Okay. You know what I'm saying? In Florida, it's, it's all blue and it has a white stripe going down. Like it's a blue uniform with a white stripe going down. But you you have your name and your DC number stamped on too. Stamped on too. Because okay. you got to put it in laundry and it gets washed. You know what I'm saying? Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it gets washed. Then they do the whites in the between. You know what I'm okay. saying? So, so the laundry man already know who's coming. And he was like, yeah, man, you got some people coming from your city, man. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, Panama City has a queue. It has a okay. queue on the tag. So, like, so these, it tells the officers to tell everybody where the person's from. Right. right. Yes. Which is probably good to know because then you, yes. if you're smart, you know where to avoid and. Okay. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yeah, man, you got a couple people coming from uh, Panama City, man. Um, uh, yeah, you know him. I was like, man, just write the name down. Like, when you come off, when you get uh, back to the dorm off work because he worked in the lunchroom. So he came back with a list of names. I'm like, nah. I'm, so I'm like, yeah. I say, nah, that's crazy. So I explained the situation that happened, you know what I'm saying? Why well, I was in prison anyway. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But when he came, he was spooked. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't know what to expect. And I stepped to him, like, because like I say, we go out there, we go out to the yard. So I stepped to him. So I used to go out there and work out from time to time. So I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? Are you straight? He was like, yeah, man, I'm straight. But he kind of like nervous. I say, man, you good, bro. I ain't, I ain't out on that, man. We from the same city, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, prison is a whole different world. So you really stick with your home team because we, we call it home team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you from, like Jacksonville, stick with Jacksonville. Uh, Miami, okay. stick with Miami. You know federal, federal level. Uh, no, this this was actually in the state. Okay. Right, this was actually in the state. Because okay. the last last uh, prison bid I did was in the state. Right? Okay. I didn't catch another federal charge. I, I, I Once I got the feds, that was okay. it for that one. You know what I'm so this was actually state. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you offered this guy grace. I did. You know what I'm saying? Because and then I don't, I don't blame him. I don't fault him for what happened. You know what I'm saying? Because that was my fault. Because if I didn't do what I did back then, and I wouldn't never have to worry about it catching up to me then. So all that was totally on me. Like, okay, his actions were still his actions because he could have spared me too. But everybody don't think like that. You know what I'm saying? Some people think like, man, it's kill or be killed. You know what I'm saying? Like I see I see K murder right here. And or I see Kevin or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I know what he used to do in the past and me and him done been in gunfires together. So I don't know what he's on. So let me go in and step to him before he have an opportunity to hit me later. So I get the I get it. Because I used to be in that same thought process. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But now I don't think like that. And I don't feel like that no move like that. So you're offering grace and mercy to a guy that is the cause for you being locked up away from your babies and because you know it's the right thing to do. I do. Because you realize he only stepped to you because of what you had done in the past. Yeah. And then some of it was out of fear. You know what I'm saying? Because if he Self-preservation to a degree, yeah. right? Because listen, if you see me now, what if you see me again two days later? You don't know if I got a gun on me, and I still feel the same way about you because it was an ongoing beat. That's not like you back. Like, hey, let's go. Let's go grab coffee. And <laughs> right. Talk about the time we shot guns at each other. Right. right? Like you're, you're not gonna do any of that. It's the lifestyle. Yeah. And I totally get it, man. Because I used to be there. Right. I used to, I used to be like that. So okay. I can I can you I can give it. that grace right because you have yeah. empathy. I do. You can you cannot just feel bad for the pain. You can tangibly feel the pain. Yes. Because okay. I've been in the same situation, man. Okay. And a lot of it be out of fear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I told it guns out of fear. You know what I'm saying? Like like you said earlier, protection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You weren't, but, not, you weren't clout chasing. You weren't trying right. to be a thing. And, you know, it's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? But now I don't got to walk around with no guns. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And God has given me grace and mercy. So I can show grace and mercy to other people, too. There's a new freedom. Yes. It comes without having to carry anything. It feels good, man. Like nice. it feels good, nice. man. Nice. It really do. You know what I'm saying? I can sleep awesome. at night. I ain't gotta worry about no gunshots. I ain't gotta worry about police. Cause I ain't doing nothing illegal. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing nothing illegal. I come to I come to safe house. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we have to do like a a a, a check in again, like maybe six months from now. We definitely can. And we're gonna still see each other every day, of course. Here. <laughs> right. But and and that's where we sit down and say, "Okay, man, where where are we at now?" Yes. And just be able to let people just walk along beside you in their own hearts and in their own minds. Yes. Right. And just let you keep being the light that you feel called to be. You know, because man, your 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 ability to. I don't know if I want to say it's your ability or just God's divine hand on you. It's probably both, <laughs> right? Like um, to to take what the devil meant for evil and let it be turned and used for good. It's beautiful, man. And um, I'm excited to see what's what's in, what's in your future and what's what's in store for you in the future. I appreciate that. Right? It's, it's cool. It's um, and we we got to figure out a way to keep you connected to your baby girls for sure. Yes, I know. Maybe maybe that's one of our next objectives to, to start working on. We can do that. Yeah, we can yeah. do that. We get you get you a career. Yeah, a little bit more stable, right? Yes, but we're gonna do that when we check in again. And uh, yes, but man, thanks for sitting down, man. Yeah. For sitting down with me, being vulnerable, sharing your story. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's a it's a beautifully painful story. Thank you. There's a, there's a lot of man, really inside of that story and there's a lot of wow cool sad right, inside right. of the story you know what i mean yes sir um a lot of injustice in the story too which we didn't even talk about any of that stuff right we didn't get, get into any of that um man it's it's seen just so you know when you're seen you just keep keep doing that one day today's gonna be day 63 not yet. You still got to earn it, right? Yes, you got to earn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy. Man. That's, I'm really, that's awesome, dude. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir.